Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. This is Auto Line Daily for October 12, 2010, and now the news. Well, General Motors is caught in yet another flaming controversy, this time about the Chevy Volt. While GM has always claimed that the Volt is only powered by electricity, Edmunds Inside Line reports that now GM admits that in some circumstances, at speeds over 70 miles an hour, the engine is mechanically connected to the front wheels. Well, that set off a flurry of criticism in the blogosphere. Inside Line actually published an article titled, GM Lied, Chevy Volt is not a true EV. So now GM's public relations people are trying to convince everyone that the Volt is a true EV. Others are saying this is much ado about nothing, but I'd say the last thing GM needs right now is any hint of controversy surrounding the Volt. And I imagine the people at Nissan who are getting ready to launch their electric car, the Leaf, are loving every minute of it. Car sales in China continue to slow down, but most other countries would love to be running at China's slower rate. According to the AP, even though sales were up 17% in September, hitting over 1.5 million units, that's down from August. Demand for vehicles has fallen since the government began phasing out tax breaks and subsidies for new cars. Despite the slowdown, though, some analysts say sales could hit 17 million units this year. Nissan released a sketch of its next generation Versa, which is a lot more stylish than the current model. The company did not share any other info about the vehicle, except that it will be unveiled in China in December. But Autoblog reports Nissan confirmed it will also be released in the U.S. A few weeks ago, Chrysler released some teaser shots of its redesigned Sebring, renamed the 200. We only got a glimpse of it, but now the company is revealing a little bit more of the sedan skin. We can see the tail lamps from a couple of different angles and some other random pictures, but the big story here is the shot of the front end. Grill, headlamps, and all. I'm anxious to see what magic Sergio stylists have worked up on this ugly duckling and if it bears any resemblance to its big brother, the 300. And in related news, Toyota revealed a teaser photo of one of its new Prius models on Facebook. Not a whole lot to see here. The profile is almost identical to the current car, but it is taller and a little longer. Could this be the rumored crossover version we've been hearing about? And it's never a good idea to update your Facebook status during working hours, unless of course you want your boss to catch it screwing around. But this is doubly true if you work for Porsche. According to Bloomberg, the German sports car builder is blocking access to social networking sites like Facebook and Xing in an effort to curb industrial espionage. The company is concerned that foreign intelligence services may be spying on workers who are posting confidential information on the internet. <laughs> really? Foreign intelligence services? Foreign competitors, yeah, I understand that, but intelligence agencies? That seems a little far-fetched to me. Hey, coming up next, let's take a look at the rat who conned the President of the United States and is now getting all kinds of accolades in the media. How could the media be so ignorant? Introducing Bridgestone's third generation of run-flat tires with groundbreaking new Bridgestone technologies. Bridgestone run-flat tires offer improved ride comfort, lower rolling resistance, and improved wear while giving you the peace of mind and comfort you need. When President Obama decided to force GM and Chrysler into bankruptcy, then completely revamp themselves and come out as viable competitive car companies, one of the people he called on to run the automotive task force was Stephen Ratner. Now, Ratner has written a book about that experience. It's called Overhaul, and it's essentially a behind-the-scenes kiss-and-tell story. It's getting all kinds of media attention, but what is amazing to me is just how much of this guy's background is ignored by the media. While the media praises Ratner for his work on the automotive task force, no one is taking him to task for the fact that he hid the fact he was an investor in Cerberus, the company that owned Chrysler at the time. That's a big time conflict of interest. Later, President Obama had to yank him off the automotive task force when it was discovered that Ratner had arranged a million dollar kickback scheme to get the New York State Pension Fund to invest with his company. 
His company was slapped with a $12 million fine, and now the Securities and Exchange Commission wants to bar Ratner from trading for three years. And a year ago, the Huffington Post reported that Ratner's wife was arrested for drunk driving in New York City, but he managed to keep it out of the media thanks to his ties to friends like Rupert Murdoch and Michael Bloomberg. It says the New York Post actually reported the incident, but later pulled the story off its website. And even the archive of the story on Google was removed. Ratner's wife is a big time fundraiser for the Democratic Party. I'm sure President Obama did not ask this guy to serve on the automotive task force just so he could turn around and make a lot of money on a book that spills his guts on the inside story. In fact, I'm sure Obama regrets he ever called Stephen Ratner to serve on the task force. So if you want to read this book, don't buy it. Go get it from your local library because Stephen Ratner is a rat who doesn't deserve a dime of anyone's money. Well, that brings us to the end of today's report on the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.